never knew how to tell you. I would tell be able what? to talk about my Can life. You what? Guy, I, I ever loved a lot. I have a two yeah, arms. You want me to say it out loud? My birth mother, she was 18 when um, she was pregnant with me and she couldn't, um, or with her family situation, she wasn't able to take care of a child that she thought. So she wrote a letter um, to this agency saying that she wanted to put her child up for adoption when, um, when she gave birth. And so my parents at the time, they were looking for someone to work with them, like a lawyer to work with them or an adoption agency, but um, everyone rejected them because they were gay. My birth mother, she was looking through the binder that had all the letters of parents who would like to adopt or people who would like to adopt to become parents. And she loved their letter. So they met, she loved them. She said, I want you to be the parents of my child. My first question, I think, to people who, would, who are saying that gay people shouldn't adopt would be why? I mean, at least I think I've turned out semi-normal, you know, as normal as I can be, you know, like, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to. If there's a loving environment, it's a great family. Um, and if, if, they, if children are going to grow up in a loving family, they're just going to grow up to be loving people. I'm sorry? I might be going. To the where? To the lock-in. We're just a great family. We all get along, you know, we always have fights. As, all families have fights and our ups and our downs, but you know we're all very open with each other. And I very I feel very comfortable talking to my parents about anything. We we do family like singing time, and I play the piano, so I I play. And my pop plays the guitar, and then my dad sings along, and we do that. And another thing that we do that I know a lot of my friends actually don't do is we sit down together, we eat dinner together, and we talk, and and that's just a great way to like catch up on what we've done during the day and. So that's, you know, just a few things that we like to do as a family. Mm -hmm. mm. What my favorite part in history? Prohibition. Uh, oh, the Harlem Renaissance? <laughs> well, and then the Roaring Twenties because of the... Um, I think um, because recently, you know, the whole idea of same-sex marriage in the United States and everywhere, I think it's affected me because my friends are talking about it too. And then it's, it's interesting hearing their opinions on it. And then like students and classmates, it's really interesting hearing what they have to say because some people, I thought, you know, they're cool with my family, but then when it comes to same-sex marriage, they have a different opinion. They're like, I don't, you know, I don't think they should get married, you know, I think things are fine the way they are. But they don't realize that, you know, they're talking about my family too. I think one thing that I would say to people who maybe don't have LGBT parents or, you know, or just in schools though that um, where kids around them are LGBT or have LGBT parents, you know, just be aware of your surroundings, be aware of things you say and because it might hurt the people around you. And, you know, we're no different. We're all the same, you know, in the sense that we all just want to be kind of cared for. We all want to be loved. and. Um, 
just kind of be aware of your surroundings and try to make it more com a more comfortable place and safer place for everyone. My dad, which passed, who passed on this summer, um, he and one of my moms, my non-biological mom, uh, met through a mutual friend. And when my mom met my other, uh, met her partner Paula, they uh, decided that they wanted to have a kid. And um, my dad offered to be the father. So that's basically how it happened. Most everything about my family makes them special. Um, just the way they act, the way they are, their humility, their just overall kindness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, lives on, he lives in a house just on the side of Stinson. Very, very It matters to me that my parents got married because just like it's a once in a lifetime thing and it's something that someone without gay parents couldn't understand because you know there's always that like empty spot I've always felt a little nervous like whenever I, I see uh, my friends are talking about like oh yeah my mom got married and this happened and I'm just always feeling a little nervous like well that can't happen to me you are a lovely dog and I love you love and love and love it Loving, loving, loving. I give my loving to you. I give all my loving. I send off to you. Until they got old, I felt, wow, I, my parents, my mom actually finally has legal custody over me. And that I, I just felt, you know, more attached to my other mom. Like, she was actually more my mom now than she was before. I just felt blessed. Okay. Okay. A lot of the stuff that politicians have said have made me feel really worried or upset just because, I mean, like, a lot of the time I'm feeling, how could we elect this person? How could this person be in office and be so prejudiced and so rude and so mean? When I was at my first school, and I hate to say this, but I was, I used to lie. I would say that um, I have four parents, but that's just because my uh, first parents broke up and then we all, both of them remarried. But now I just say, oh yeah, I have uh, two moms and one dad. I used to have another dad and yeah, they're both gay. All four of them are gay. And people, They'll first look at me confused and then they'll just get it, you know, a lot of the time. Either that or they just get this sneer on their face and turn away and walk away and, oh well, they're lost, you know. It's not my fault. Oh no, stop! Stop! <laughs> no. <laughs> the first time I changed schools is, uh, a lot of the kids at the school was, were homophobic and, you know, I just kind of felt reclusive like I couldn't talk to any of them except for the people that I'd known since I was really little. But a lot, also a lot of the kids there were just really mean 
and I would try not to, you know, talk about it, not to let people know. But people eventually found out and just, you know, I was really badly teased. And I just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> That's it. Shut up! I have to say, kids with gay parents, I find that they're a lot more humble, a lot more, you know, nice, a lot more respectful of other cultures or religion or anything different from what they're used to, just because they have experienced it themselves and they know how hard it can be. younger, I was about five or six, my mom was sort of in a bad um, relationship and her boyfriend was pretty abusive and it just wasn't a good um, place for me to be in. And my uncle and my dad decided that they needed to get me out. So we went through all the court things and all of that and um, my uncle got guardianship over me. But at the time my uncle was my aunt because he was... Um, a lesbian at the time so I really had two aunts but um, I just refer to him as my uncle because that's what I have known him as for a while and it just comes natural we're not very um, normal uh, not that any family really is normal but I think mine especially is very weird Oh yes, I have non-stick pans, the best purchase I've ever made. It's true. Cool now. Ow. My eye! Ow! <laughs> Ow. <laughs> we talk sarcastically a lot to each other and I think the fact that we can really just be as crazy and weird as we want to be and still function as a family <laughs> is pretty special. The art of mashing beans. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. No, you can't go in there. No, I'm sorry, you can't go in there. No. We're off limits. <laughs> um, same sex marriage has not really been an issue in my family because my uncle, um, who was a woman, is um, a man now, so he was able to marry my aunt without any complications or anything because the F has turned to an M on his ID. So what, did, what movies did you end up seeing? The day my guardians got married was, it was very emotional and it was very joyous. It was a joyous occasion and family were there and friends were there. So it was, it was great. It just makes me sad that people who want to get married and have that experience can't because they're lesbian or gay, so I wish everybody who wanted to could go through that same process. Auntie, did you call me? I said bye, Poppy. Oh, bye. 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 Oh. I think huh? society really makes it seem like they're not able to both be lesbian or gay or transgendered and have a child at the same time. It's, it's sort of like they have to play two parts and really I just think they're just being who they are and being a parent comes as natural as being, you know, gay or lesbian. I think it's really, really sad how judged people are by the media and by society just because they're not the same. They're not as normal as everyone else, you know? So I just don't see how they should be judged because of 
who they may fall in love with or um, what sex they prefer in life and I think they have they have loved me and taken care of me as, in any way that a parent would you know so I'm really class. I will <laughs> I like body wraps <laughs> what's your other choice? Stephen, Stephen King, King. Experiences that I've had with telling my friends about my um, uncle being a lesbian at the time was um, in middle school. Um, I had my friends over one day at my grandma's house and um, my grandma had pictures on the wall of my dad and my two uncles. Except for um, my uncle was a girl at the time because he was a girl. <laughs> so there's pictures of him with long hair and, you know, boobs. So um, <laughs> I told my friend she had seen the pictures and she was like, wow, that really looks like your uncle, you know? And I was like, yeah, that's because it is my uncle. And she was just like, ew, you know? She just got really grossed out and she's like, ew, oh my God. And she, she made a scene. She, she called my other friends from the living room. She was all like, oh my God, looky, you know, that's Jessica's, that's Jessica's uncle. He used to be a girl and da 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 da. And so I was just sort of like, oh my God. She couldn't handle something like that. And I realized then that some people just don't know how to handle things like that. And they don't know how to handle queer people and transgender people. And they weren't taught as I was taught to understand um, that people are different. And it's helped me realize that I have to decide, you know, whether I really need to tell people and who I can, who I can tell. It is a hard decision. My family and LGBT people are not just words on the media, pictures in the news. Uh, my family is actual people and we feel just like anybody feels. I've had parents just like anyone's had parents and we're actual people and I just want people to realize that lives are behind the faces and behind the news that comes up every day. Family to me means a place where you can be, where you can talk to people and get comfort when you need it, and love and respect. You don't even have to have money or anything or like live in like a house to have family. Like family, your family you could be at your school or your friends. And for me, my family is my two moms. Okay, yeah, you have to have both of your feet touch the same step though. <laughs> Can't just skip steps. One good experience of with me having two moms is the sheer fact that I'm probably oh, a lot more rounded off than other time. kids and have a broader view of the world. And I have probably more friends than most people would. They're better friends because that means they're actually your friends. Because some of my friends, well, who I thought were friends, aren't friends to me anymore because I have two moms. And it's probably not even them; it's their parents. They're afraid and. I don't want them to hang around with people like that, and it doesn't make any sense to me. At first, my grandpa didn't like it, and he didn't want me to be with my mom. Then he realized that it's his daughter, and that why would he be so mean to her, and that he loves her still, and that it doesn't matter who she's with or what she does in life, that he'll always love her. So he, he was more accepting, but then he died last year. What do you think, is this better than the slide? No. Okay. One time when I was in second grade, they asked me who do I live with and I said my mom and my other mom. Like, well, why does your other mom live with you? And I said, and I didn't really 
know the word lesbian at the time. And so I was a little confused, didn't know what to say. I'm like, well, well, what about your family? And then they said, well, my mom says that two people who have gay parents are bad. And I'm like, well, what's gay? Because I hadn't really faced this problem before. And so then his parents um, came to the school and said that they didn't want me to hang out with him anymore. And that was it. In middle school, I was like kind of afraid because like people were always talking like like that was when the term "that's so gay" came out, and that's when people were like, "Well, that's so gay, that's so gay." And I'm like, "Well, they're all talking about all this bad stuff and it's calling it gay, so I can't let them know that I have gay parents because that means I'm bad." So I couldn't do anything about that. And like whenever people ask like, oh, "Who's that other lady that dropped off your lunch?" Like you didn't, there's, there's, you said that was other lady is your mom. Like, well, that's my mom. Like, who is she? Like, is she our aunt? I'm like, okay, yeah, she's my aunt. She's living with us for a while. I feel really bad about that, but I'm also like really ashamed, but I don't do that anymore, and I just tell everybody that I have two moms and let them decide. You can't judge me based on my parents. That's good. All right, come here. Ready? Oh, say bye-bye, tree. Bye-bye, tree. Say bye-bye. You want to get down? I started telling people that my parents were lesbians because I just realized that Lying to myself about them is going to change anything, and that I still love them, and that I should be more like my grandpa and accept them. That's crazy though. She's gonna they usually ask me, well, like, well, who is your dad? Do you know your dad? Where is he now? And I say, my dad was Puerto Rican. I don't know him. I haven't known him, and that he left when I was little. And also they ask, like, are you gay? Because your parents are gay, and I say. No, I'm not. And my mom ha came from uh, a straight family who everybody in, like, on that side of the family is straight, and she's gay. So are your parents going to make you straight or they make you gay? I mean, it depends. They, your parents can really make you do anything, really. I mean, people like rebel against their parents all the time. So think about it. They can't really make you do anything. You just will it. And you want to because it's right for you. And my, parent, my mom's right thing was to be a lesbian, so that's how it is. I just wish I also everybody else knew that like like when you like walk around and like saying like homophobic things that there might be somebody like right on your shoulder who's hurting inside because you're saying those things and not like want to tell you because you're saying those things and then they'll be hurt even more. So it's kind of like a issue that you can't get out of. It's like being in a trap. Which one do you want to use? Same-sex marriage is probably the biggest issue for my family because my parents are a binational couple. So that means that one of my moms isn't legally allowed to be a citizen. They've been together for I guess about seven years now, going on seven years, and legally married for about one as of yesterday. So this really is a big issue for me because my parents don't have the same rights as my friend's parents. You know, my mom isn't allowed to immigrate. You know, if something happened to my non-biological mom and she was in the hospital, I'd say about probably 95% of hospitals wouldn't let me see her because I'm not blood related, so therefore I'm not considered family. You know, and on paper, we're not considered family. Don't it's, okay. it's cold outside. When we went to San Francisco last year, February, Friday, February 13th, um, and we were given our marriage certificate, that was probably one of the happiest days of our life because, you know, watching them exchange rings and exchange vows was just really a moment that I can't, you know, even put into words. It was just so, like, so joyous. So when our, when the marriage licenses, you know, were invalidated and we found that out, that really, I mean, that was a hard, hard moment. But no one could ever take that license away from us, you know. No one can invalidate our love as a family. Okay, ready to go in? Where she 
really in middle school um, is where I guess I faced, you know, kind of my first discrimination. It wasn't actually so much with the kids because really, you know, just being young, you're open to so many different things. And I really opened a lot of my friends' minds a lot, you know, by kind of sharing with them, this is my family, you know, and they would meet my moms and really just, you know, say, wow, you know, you guys are just like my family. You know, you have dinner, you take your dog out for walks, you know, it's, there's really not a whole lot of differences. But the teachers, on the other hand, is where I faced, you know, most of my problems. I wasn't allowed to do two Mother's Day projects or family tree projects because my family wasn't a real family, according to them. So what they offered me to do was either choose one mom, you know, for a family tree project or make up an imaginary father, because that's what they thought that I needed. It's so sad to turn on the TV and, you know, hear our president, the president of the United States, you know, the free world, you know, the country where everyone wants to come to live, you know, America is, you know, the world's superpower. And he's telling us, you know, not all families are equal. Not all people are equal. And for the first time in history, we want to write discrimination into the Constitution. Is it possible to speak to Warren Um Let me, the manager should be down here, so let me find you the manager. And you can we'd love to actually speak if possible with Warren, because we saw this in the newspaper where it said that he, you know, he's keep, he himself has decided to keep his um, office hours open later, right. accommodating yeah, those I don't, in the I, Yeah, I don't know if he's available right this minute. So I'll let you talk to Teresa. She's the manager, okay. and she's coming right here. Okay, great. I really hope that, you know, every high school kid, you know, that says, you know, that's so gay, and all those people that, you know, don't think gay marriage should be possible, I really wish that they could just see our family and, and how small our differences are. You know, that kids of LGBT families especially are just like every other kid, you know. There's no higher, you know, suicide rate or dropout rate or any of those different kinds of things, you know. If anything, you know, I think parents, you know, um, that are gay or lesbian and that have children are held to a higher standard because there's always people watching, you know, like, well, you know, what's, what's different about that family, you know, are they doing something wrong? So I think that um, especially my parents have tried to give me, you know, as many opportunities as possible, you know, and luck lucky for me, I've been raised knowing that there's many different types of, you know, not only families, but religions and cultures and races. And like, I've been given the broadest, you know, outlook. And I wish that every other child could be given that experience because I think that's amazing. Unfortunately, uh, Gavin and I just have a difference of opinion. Our lawyers have advised us that my responsibility, number one, is to uphold the law in California as it's written. This is a, clearly a legislative matter, and uh, if the courts get involved and clarify the situation in San Francisco, so be it. We'll follow that law. Because, I mean, you also have a responsibility to all the citizens of your county, which we are. And we just spoke to Rich, who definitely stands for equality and who is another leader, the president of the Board of Supervisors, I believe, now, and who is standing up for equality and saying that we as a family deserve to be married. And him and his partner would also someday like to be married. And we asked him, you know, why he could not then um, tell you to allow us to be married. And he said that, you know, you weren't under his jurisdiction of the Board of Supervisors, but you instead were, you know, a leader of the people, and it was actually the people that elected you, and therefore the people that you listened to. So, you know, I, the person, my moms and I, the people, you know, I would like you to marry my moms. Because, you know, I know that you did take an oath, and so did Gavin, and like my mom said, you know, in the Constitution, you know, all people, all men, all women are created equal. So my parents' love is just as equal as a man and a woman's love. Our family, you know, w will not and cannot be invalidated. I mean, not only do we need the need the rights and deserve the rights, but it's vital to our family to have them. You know, my parents are a binational couple and we have no rights. My moms are legal strangers. And I, as a child, deserve to be protected. Millions of other children like me, including in this county, also deserve the legal protections that comes along with marriage. I mean, you have to believe, you know, somewhere in you, your moral conscience. You know, you have to have a moral conscience that says that this is an unjust law. Can you write me, can you write me a note too? Right here. Okay, right now. Can you leave it on the coffee table, please? Mm -hmm. Look, look what it says. Reina Gato is late to school today because she had to go to the county clerk's office to attempt to get a marriage license for her moms. Please excuse the tardy. Ramona Gato. <laughs> I know that, you know, by going back every year, even if they deny us for every single year, I know that we are making change, you know, because for every, every person that stands up, every one politician, every one student, every one parent that stands up and says, you know, I stand for equality. On my watch, discrimination will not happen. That changes the world.
We are the children of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender parents. We are normal, and we're just, just like, like you. you. Don't worry about how I was born. Care about the way I live my life. It doesn't matter how you were born, but how you live. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter if you, you agree, agree with my family. What matters is that you give us respect and rights. It doesn't matter what struggles you're faced, but how you choose to make a difference. They teach, teach us in school to, to love and accept, while the world around us continues to reject. My family's love is just as strong as yours. Some, some rights you just won't hand us. You just don't, you don't understand, understand us. us. Maybe if you spent some time in my shoes, you could understand the world from my point of view. We ask for your help in reaching for justice. Just open your mind.